What's up fishing fam? Gramps here with Hickman Outdoors. Today's question is what's in your kayak crate? And that comes from Jay over at Bearded Dad Fishing who did a video and a challenge showing everything that he carries in his kayak crate and then issued a challenge out to other various YouTubers to show what's in their kayak crate. The first couple of shout outs went out to Wendell Fishing and Chad Hoover, who called me out and said, Gene, the Fluke Master Jensen, I'm calling you out to do a crate challenge and uh, JT Hickman, let's see how you've got your kayak crate set up. So that's what we're gonna jump into today. I fish out of the Old Town Autopilot 120. I affectionately call the Kayadillac. And in the Kayadillac is one 16 by 16 Yak Attack Black Pack crate. By far my favorite crate of all and I've been through several of them. This one hands down for me does the trick. Now I'm going to show you my crate as is just off of a trip to Lake Gunnersville down in Huntsville, Alabama. So let's go ahead and take a dive and look at what's in this crate and then break down everything in it, about it, why I have what I have, and show you how I've got it set up. All right so let's get down to it. What is in my Yak Attack Black Pack? Starting with the front, we got two locking latches. Keeps your lid shut when you're traveling across the water, down the road, depending on what you're doing. Often on short trips in my trailer, I will keep my black pack in the back of my kayak and these lock so the lid stays down. You've got corner tie downs, all four on each side. So I got three rod tubes on each side and then to the back lets me carry eight rods on the black pack itself there are tie down tethers for your rods if you need if you've got expensive gear it's always a good idea to tether them down but let's go ahead and crack it open this thing is filthy and junked up from my trip coming back from gunnersville so what you see is literally as it is as i took it off of my kayak and put it in the back of my truck so let's uh let's sit down and talk about what's in each one of these containers now generally in here I could fit six of these 3600 Plano Edge tackle boxes or any regular 3600 size box in the front of these three on each side and that's what I'll do a lot of the times. I actually build my crate out with what I'm going to fish with each time generally when I get to the water. I will keep common stuff in here but I will actually swap this stuff out with the extra tackle and containers that I keep in one of the drawers in my decked system in my pickup truck. I'm not a proponent of carrying everything I own out on the water. I will generally adjust my tackle for a tournament based on my results for pre-fishing. Now, if I'm out fishing for fun, I've basically got generic packs of things that I carry with me every time I go out that I throw most common. But if I need technique specific items, I will pack various of these crates and load the kayak crate based on the conditions of the day. So since I grabbed this one first, we'll go ahead and start with this. This is my jerkbait slash topwater box. And you can see again, this isn't cleaned up. This is straight out the kayak from being down on the water. But I've got various jerk baits from Mega Bass from Six Cent. I've got small swim baits like this little Boca swim bait. I have deeper diving jerk baits. I've got arc topwater poppers. I've got the whopper ploppers and more jerk baits but i keep you know kind of a mix this is like my hard treble hook top water type box that's in this plano 3600 next up i grab my jackhammer box which has got a mix of various jackhammers stealth chatter baits regular chatter baits thunder crickets all mixed up as you can see i've got a variety of colors black and blue bluegill color shad colors this is my bladed jig box Next up is my small terminal tackle box. And this is one of the Busby boxes. I love it because it's got separate pockets for each different hook slash weight, whatever you're carrying and terminal tackle. Love this thing, keeps everything separate. You can shake it up, you can throw it around. It keeps everything in its little cup, pocket and dry. This is the first box from Busby that I've picked up. And for me, I wanted to try it on something that I really, really needed it for specifically. And this year has been super solid. Now I also have another terminal tackle box, which is a Plano Edge 3700. That again stays in the decked drawer system to refill this as I need in between tournament days. My next box is my jig box. Again, a mix of all kinds of different black and blue and green pumpkin and then sometimes some Okeechobee mixed in here. And I have jigs from several different makers of varying sizes, mostly 
quarter ounce and three eighths. I'm way more about finesse jigs than, than anything. I like small jigs, but I'll go with a bigger trailer if need be, like these, you know, from Reaction Innovations. Um, tons of different soft plastics. We'll get to those in a minute. Most of these are black and blue or some form of green pumpkin or maybe even a mix of like an Okeechobee crawl, which kind of combination. I have swim jigs. I've got a bladed six cent swim jig. I've got a few of each of these in here. I got bluegill color swim jigs. You'll see I've still got some trailers laying in here like this Strike King. Again, a small Beast Coast fishing uh, tungsten jig heads. Strike King and Beast Coast are like two of the main jigs that I throw. Uh, I'll throw the Bitsy Bugs. I throw the new Strike King Tungstens. I throw the Strike King Structure Jig. Um, those are my favorite ones. I do have some Berkeley Skipping Jig Heads that are a little bit bigger and I have a specific setup. I'll throw those on them if I'm fishing under docks. But that's my jig box. Next up is like my other top water and swim bait box if that makes sense. Oh and spinner baits. So in this box I've got I don't know why this is still in here, but probably just because it got thrown in here. Another one of the Whopper Ploppers. I've got a couple of Z-Man Hellraisers. Love that bait. It just for whatever reason, it catches fish. I got another Whopper Plopper. I think I just threw this. Oh, I know why I threw it in here. Uh, I've got a six inch trace, so I also have swim baits in here. I also have a Mega Bass Mag Draft. I've got a couple I need to restock. These boxes, a lot of them are empty or you know have baits missing from you know getting hung up or lost from the last tournament so I need to refill these and restock them and you know that's what we're doing right after this video. Mega Bass Buzz Baits. This is a train wreck because I just thrown everything in here. Mega Bass Buzz Baits. I got Shimano Spinner Baits. This one's a Mega Bass SV3 in a shad color. And then yes, Gramp still keeps frogs. Here's a Spro. This one's a uh, walking frog. And then this one is one of the Spro popping frogs. Uh, again, this is a train wreck that yeah, I'll clean up later. My next box is my crankbait box. I need to reload it because I lost several. Actually, I lost all of the particular color I had except for the one that I gave Jeremy. And my biggest bass, which is 20 and a half on day two that we were down there, came on that specific crankbait. And then on day three in the big bass tournament, um, that same bait caught Jeremy his 20 and three quarters bass that paid him out a thousand dollars. I've got some restocking to do because I just had my order from Six Cents to come in. <laughs> also laying in the bottom of the crate is a spare reel I had. This one's got braid on it in case I needed to do anything with braid make a quick change out on my heavy rod. That's my Lose Pro SP skipping reel. Here is my Yak Attack tournament flag. I just threw it in there too. Um, I love this because it folds down real small. You can uh, wrap the tournament flag around it and then and then just wrap the bungee around and connect it back to the light. I have to have a 360 light if I'm on the water before daylight because I have a motorized kayak. So they make us register and treat it like a boat. And I love this thing. I leave it up and on all day long. I'll turn the light off after the sun comes up. But then I have a tournament flag with me always. So if any boats are flying around, better chance of being seen. But love the Yak Attack foldable flag. All right, I'm just gonna start grabbing out these KVD speed bags with the six 3600 Plano Edge or whatever 3600 tackle boxes in the front, three on each side, that allows me to put four of these KVD speed bags behind them to store various items. And I normally carry a tool bag, spare parts, accessories, and then three bags of various plastics. This one is, and it's funny, it's probably a tool bag because I don't have it marked. Yep, it's the tool bag. And in my tool bag, I carry all kinds of spare parts. I often tell everybody two is one, one is none. If you break one and you had two, you got a spare. If you only had one, then you got none. So what do I keep in here? All kinds of different stuff. I keep a spare prop for my autopilot. I've got a spare donkey leash for attaching fish to my kayak before while I get my net and board set up. I use a pair of fish grips normally. Those are in the kayak right now. Uh, yeah, a second spare, second spare prop. I've got fishing gloves if I ever use them, especially on summer days. I have a spare whistle. I'll keep one on my vest and a second one in here. I've got my scale if I catch a monster that needs to be weighed. I keep various batteries, triple A's, double A's. I've got a remote for my autopilot, so I need spare batteries for that. I've also got the flag that has to stay on. I've got headlamps that I need to power as well, so I always carry a, quite a few packs of batteries. 
I've got extra KBF tourney tags and a Sharpie. I've got a spare actual tin tourney tag and another Sharpie. I keep pliers and a screwdriver. Um, I've got shear pins. I've got extra prop nuts for my, um, this is an extra floating prop nut for my trolling motor uh, propeller and you know all kinds of other odds and ends. Another one of the things I keep in there is, I love this repel bug spray because it A works pretty good, but it also works great at removing the Sharpie on your tin tournament tags. Spray this on the black Sharpie, let it soak a second, grab your cloth and rub it off and you're clean and set up, ready for the next day. All right, that's it for the spare pack stuff. Now this one, I've actually got one of my smaller speed bag, and, and this one I carry my spare chatterbait trailers or you know swim baits. I got swim bait, um, underspin hooks and, and blades, more juggle minnows, uh, black and blue swim-ons, just a mix of all my trailers. Another, uh, let's see. This would be probably my creature bait worm bag. What do I got in here? Oh, the uh, the scounge bug. That's what I was trying to think of from Rage Tail and Strike King. More Yamadukis. Um, no, no tackle is complete without Missile Baits D bombs. Zoom Speed Crawls. Missile Baits Baby D bombs. Uh, with some hog, uh, boar hogs that I throw on Carolina rigs from Z Man. Oh, Adrenaline Crawls from X Zone. And then I got some Strike King Mag Fatty Z's, which are my favorite uh, Texas rig baits. And then I got my finesse bag, and I know it because it says I wrote on Sharpie finesse on top of this one. And I got a mix of X Zone uh, worms, Zoom, Robo Worm, Missile Baits, Robo Worm combo. Those are pretty good on a drop shot. I got some Z Man finesse worms. All right, so that's the basic load of what I keep in my crates. Again, I will swap in and out soft plastics, hard baits based on the situation. Again, if I'm pre-fishing or fun fishing, I'll take a good mix of variety of black and blue or green pumpkin and then whatever, you know, chatterbaits and jackhammers I'm gonna be throwing today. If I'm fishing in a big tournament like one of the championships, I will base my crate off of what I noticed in free pre-fishing plus a couple of things I might think you know might come into play and then I will load that but I really keep it pretty minimal when I am when I'm fishing an actual tournament day in this challenge I'm going to call out my freedom squad brethren OEF5 and the other half of this channel Jeremy Hickman what's in your crate if you want to see a walk around of my old town autopilot 120 hey you can watch that right here if not this video right here is one that YouTube thinks you might want to watch. If you like videos like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Drop me a comment down below. What crate do you carry in your kayak? Until next time, get outside when you can and make some memories. One cast at a time.